All right, guys, we are live for another Travel Tip Tuesday. And today, my guest is Jason. How do you, spell, how do you say your last name? Oberdolf? Oberdolf, just like it's spelled. Oberdolf. Oh, that was very close. Yeah. <laughs> Over the hill. Yes, yes. Awesome. Well, we're I'm very excited to have him on today. We're going to talk about exploring the northeast of the USA today. And he is a photographer that I met on Instagram and his photos are just absolutely incredible. So we're going to talk about some of the places that he has explored um, and just, you know, some tips and what's actually happening up there in the northeast, uh, getting all the sections here of the US. So thank you so much, Jason, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, before we get, you know, into the nitty gritty of everything, I do want you to have the opportunity to introduce yourself to everyone. Um, tell us a little bit about, about you, where you're from, where you live now, et cetera. Okay. Um, I live in Maryland. I live about 40, 45 minutes north of Baltimore. And I live in a unique spot because you have Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, and I'm like 15 minutes from each. And it's a very photogenic, er photogenic area, and I'm blessed to be around that. So, um, yeah, I've been living here pretty much all my life. Not born here. I was born in Tennessee, uh, um, Fort Campbell. No, Kentucky. I'm sorry. It's weird because Tennessee and Fort, Fort Campbell sits across both states, I guess. So... Don't really remember that part of it, but I've always been here. And like I said, this is a beautiful area, very photogenic. A lot of the pictures on my Instagram are like 15 minutes from my house, but I do travel a little bit and definitely willing to offer any like tips that I would have as far as going out and venturing and finding things. Absolutely. So that's really cool. So you've always been on the border of somewhere, of two states, one or the other, right? So yes. that, that's very different from the perspective that I get because I live here in South Florida and it takes me 12 years just to get out of Florida. So yeah. <laughs> true, true, I know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I wish that it was closer to the border of, um, of Florida because then there is like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, like everything's like right there. And yeah. he, like here in Florida, like it, it doesn't take me 12 years, but it takes me probably like seven hours to get out of Florida, which is like a good chunk of the day. <laughs> sure. So um, pictures that you liked was when I went up to Watkins Glen, I'm five, five hours away from there. And um, I live in Maryland and that's in New York. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's a great benefit to living in this area. And there's so much history, old, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of history here. So it's just nice to be able to utilize, you know, that with photography and going out and finding old things and capturing pictures lots of tributaries in this area that contribute to the susquehanna river which um most of, like a lot of my shots come from that and even uh, up in new york state you know susquehanna river starts way up there and then it kind of gets bigger and ends out in the ocean here in maryland so a lot of cool stuff in this area and blessed you know what i mean Absolutely. So what, how did you get into photography? Um, how did you come across that? I mean, I sort of have a very small passion for photography as well, but I don't have all the setup and everything. So tell us about how you kind of got into that. I know it's a new venture for you, but you do absolutely amazing. And make sure you stay tuned, uh, guys, because I'll show you in just a second. <laughs> um, so I've always had like an eye for photography and I would use like cheaper cameras. And then obviously I would I, iPhones came out, which in Androids, they shoot amazing pictures. Um, but then, um, so I wanted to try to like kind of change careers and basically get into web development. And the first class that we took was uh, digital imagery, which was Photoshop. And they would, he, my professor, and I still talk to him constantly, like a lot. We, we still keep in touch. And it's been like two and a half, three years. And um, he's a very cool guy, but he would give us assignments and we would pretty much turn around and he would like, you can use stock photo sites. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I had a Canon PowerShot. And I was like, 
like we had to make magazine covers. So I would take pictures of like wine bottles because I've always appreciated the art that comes on like some of those wine bottles. So I would in I would make my own wine world magazine in Adobe um, InDesign. So did that and then that kind of got me into it. And then I met a girl that I work with with the company that I'm with and she was kind of into photography and she got me back into it. And um, she's not into it quite the same as I am. She's just limited for time, I guess. But um, yeah, that's when I started picking up my camera and I was like, I'm not buying stock images or not buying, but getting stock images off sites for my college um, classes. So just kind of got into it that way. And then I always liked long exposure pictures, but never knew how they were accomplishing them. And obviously on my Instagram, you'll see I have a lot of long exposures. That's my thing. And um, <clears throat> no, I just went that route. I stuck with it. Um, it was very therapeutic for me to go out and start my morning sitting next to a waterfall or a river or anything like that. And then just the adventure of it. You know, I didn't realize there was so much around me. And then I started looking it up and just jumping in my truck with my camera and my tripod and then just getting out there. And that's that's kind of what kept me into it. And then the big feedback on Instagram, which I'm not like a thousand dollar or a thousand dollar, but a thousand like follower Instagram. But it's it's only been up for like less than a year. And I got a lot of love from a lot of people around the world, like big guys all the way down to people that, that reach out to me, like, how do you do what you do and everything like that. So it's a lot of fun. It's a great community to be in. It's very artsy and um, no, I love it. So that's how I got into photography was basically just trying to go back to college and, you know, COVID hit. So college kind of dwindled away and, you know, nobody could kind of figure it out, but that's how, that's how I got back into it. And it's just been a passion ever since. I love that. Yeah, no. So I, I've always had an eye for photography too. So like I, I tried it when I first started my travel page, like it was originally just landscapes and such like that. And then I was like, okay, well it's called the traveling Lucy. And they're like, who the heck is Lucy? Cause all I see is nature. So I was like, that's when I started incorporating me in it. But I do want to show um, people like what type of photography you're talking about with the long exposures and stuff. Cause when I found you on Instagram, I don't even know how I found, like, I just came across your profile because um, it's so cool how you can connect with people on Instagram and, like, just see things that you like and how it connects with you. And just, I was blown away by your photography. So, guys, this is his Instagram page. So, obviously, you know, you guys can follow him at J-O underscore photography. But some of the really cool, and I say all the time, I'm like, listen, I will chase as many waterfalls as I want. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've, I've like made that my caption on a few different things, like where I, I'm like, you know, that's I, the whole song, like don't go chasing waterfalls. I'm like, I make a play on that, and I'm like, oh, I'm that's exactly what I'm doing, chasing these waterfalls. So it is really cool the different shots that you get and how you really accentuate the water and just everything. It's really just really cool. Yeah, there's my daughter there. That's. She was she was accentuating the water there, and sadly enough, she, she, she wrecked after that, and she was fine. But um, no, great trip. My buddy owns eighty acres up in Wellsboro, PA, and that's the cabin we go to, and that's where I got all the. This actually the one shot right there with the creek next to her. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the creek that runs 10 foot off the property of the house and such a beautiful area. We, we made such a good weekend of that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my life pretty much. I mean, I just have fun. Yeah, no, I love it. And it's just, it's so unique. And so you mentioned that you use a camera, but do you ever use your phone? Is that ever something that you use so now? If you go back to the top, there's the picture of my truck, which I'm not about showing off what I have and all that. But that picture I came out of this Creek and I was like, dude, that's a really good looking picture. So I just snapped it with my iPhone. And um, like I said, I'm really not that way as far as snapping. People do that a lot. They take pictures of their stuff, but yeah, that was with an iPhone, but predominantly all these pictures are done with um, my DSLR. Now the picture underneath, we were at the cabin with the dog on it or on my daughter, my, I didn't even take that picture, my friend Angie, and I gave her love on that picture. She took that picture. It's my buddy Todd's um, wife, 
but yeah, she took that picture. But mo all these pictures are pretty much done with my DSLR. Yeah, no, there's some really cool, cool shots. And I just love the waterfall ones. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. I, I love, love, it. I love uh, how it just makes the water look like s smoke almost. Yeah, no, I just love how it smooths everything out. There's a lot of landscape photographers that don't, I that I've seen that are like sometimes your exposure is just too long and it's too drawn out. There's no definition in the water, but some people like that. Mm -hmm. and just the photography that I love. Hey, and you know that's that's what makes it unique too, is because a lot of people don't think about photography and that photography is art. It really is. I mean, if you look at if you go to art festivals and everything, there's plenty that are just like art pictures of art um, or photography and it's like stretched out onto a canvas. Well, so it's, it's funny you say that because it is an art form. And when I was up at Watkins Glen, that's the first time I've ever seen Watkins Glen Gorge. And I found obviously a few photographers up there and the one woman she's sitting there and I'm not knocking her for anything that she does, but she, she was doing like um, stack imaging where she was like neutralizing her highlights. And then she would take another image and she was like getting all of her low lights in focus. And then you take them into Photoshop and you put the two together. So you have a perf perfectly like a perfect image that is exposed perfectly. And mm -hmm. she's like, do you use this app? And I said, I really don't believe in that. I said, I kind of just take pictures by eye and mm -hmm. like how I feel it looks good. And I said, I feel like if everybody, you, I didn't say this to her, but I was like, in my mind, I feel like if everybody used this app that tells you what your aperture, your ISO, everything should be in your shutter speed, then we would re really wouldn't have anything any different than the last person. So me, it's like, if I can put my own personal spin on it and like, this is what looks good to me, then obviously I'm personalizing it to who I am as a person when I go out in the field and I shoot pictures with my camera. And then when you come into Lightroom or Photoshop, which I use to do my post-production work, you know, camera shoot, in my opinion, kind of like a really flat image, like even when mm -hmm. you do all those things in field, but this is how I can make it look how my eyes saw it when I was in field. And that's mm -hmm. what, that's where it's like, okay, you like my stuff. Cause maybe like you might see the world a little bit, like maybe I see the world because I'm doing that personal artistic feel. And it'd be no different than me painting a picture or writing a song. And you're like, I really feel this song. I, I, I really feel this is personable to me. So that's what photography is to me. And I think that's why I've been able to excel at it at an exponential rate, because I'm not trying to, I don't follow photographers. I just go out with my camera and do my thing and mm -hmm. it's working out for me and it's fun. But yes, it is. A, it's very, it's very artistic because it's a very personal thing because it's the guy taking the cam or the, the camera out, taking the picture and he's trying to put or she he she's trying to put their spin on this is how i actually felt this is how i felt in the image and if you can get that out of that you're going to be successful you know absolutely no and i i do the same thing with my photos too because like i don't over edit my photos so on my all of my photos on instagram or on my facebook page like i put i will accentuate it a little bit so i'll do a little bit of the contrast just to bring out the because like i know how i feel in that moment and especially like if i'm hiking and sometimes the camera i only use my phone though so like i'm you know not mm -hmm. i always invest in my phones to make sure that i have like the samsung galaxy s20 ultra so it's like the camera is incredible on it <laughs> don't get me wrong right but um you know the way that it, it the way that it takes the photo is really good but sometimes like i don't feel like it's as green as when i'm there so it's like bringing up that contrast maybe a little bit of the saturation to bring in that color i only i all of my photos on my page are very minimally edited like they are not like it's it's crazy sometimes you see people do photos and they're like night and day compared to like what they were before and then you give an unrealistic expectation to people when they actually go to these places and like you know the expectation versus reality type of thing right no and i've seen some of your pictures but your pictures also too have a personal touch like you make it feel like wow i really want to be there that place looks fun to go to so that's your personal feel that you put on it 
maybe like there's pictures that you've seen where like, wow, I really want to go there. Like, but that's just us putting our personal feels in on the pictures. And then, you know, we obviously, you know, we have something that we both like within these pictures. And it's just like, you know, that's how we connect as artists. So to me, I mean, like I said, I don't really drown myself in the idea of trying to make live up to expectations of strangers that I might come across on, you know, social media. But like, I do really get personal when I get out into like on location and taking my pictures and it, it, it seems to be kind of, it's working for me. You know what I mean? Like I'm not looking to be, we're all looking to be millionaires, but I'm not looking to like get rich overnight off of my photography and I'm not looking really to make money at all. But if I can share a piece of the world that some people might not be able to afford to see or just can't see physically or they're just not able to do it, that's where I'm, I'm going to show you my my piece of happiness. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why I'm so compassionate about it. Yeah, I love that. No, and you know, and that's my whole my whole goal is to inspire people to actually get out and go to these places because it's so crazy how many people. A lot of people never leave their state. A lot mm -hmm. of people never leave their their town. Sometimes, like I've met people who've literally never left their town, and that is mind blowing to me. I mean, I just did this whole huge trip out west to the western um, USA, and the trip was incredible. Like literally, I went to um, Colorado. Uh, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Kansas, like Wyoming, every single state was not what I expected it to be. Like there were parts of it that I was like, oh yeah, like this is kind of what I thought it would be. But like majority of it, like I was like, I, I had no idea that this is what this looked like. Right. And it's great. Like Idaho is like four, practically four different states. Like there's four different types of like landscape in Idaho, like going from North to South or South to North. Yeah. I was like, flabbergasted by it and then like in utah it's like every corner you turn you're like oh this is cool and then it's like even cooler in the next turn i'm just like i can't like <laughs> this is too pretty <laughs> i watch i watch a video so there's three photographers that i like to follow um peter mckinnon he was kind of the first one but he's not my type of photographer but he's a great guy he has my personality um and he's very 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 good at what he does. He's just a different type of photographer. Actually, I just saw he posted a picture tonight and I was talking to my daughter. And I was like, Peter McKinnon actually did a long exposure shot. Crazy. And he's from Canada. But then there's um, Mark Denny, who's very good. He's a great landscape photographer. And then you got Nick. And there was a Q&A watch. Nick Page, I enjoy his as well as um, Peter McKenna. And I was. Oh, I think you're breaking uh, up. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you might have gotten disconnected for two seconds, but let's see. I'm going to show you guys while he gets reconnected. I am going to share um, my screen really quick again so you guys can see some of the photography that he does in case you missed it before. But um, some of the photography that he does is super incredible, um, and I truly admire it. Look at this. This is gorgeous. And so he he does a lot with waterfalls, which is why I love it so much because I'm I just love waterfalls. So it's funny, um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. And some of these places I haven't been able to explore the Northeast as much as I would have liked to. Um, but being able to like see his photos definitely makes me want to go out there more. This is one of his friends that um, was out here, but these are the photos that he takes. Now you should be connecting back on here in just a second. Look at that one. And I think that the unique perspective that you get from some of like seeing it from someone else's eye, like the angle, whether it be lower or higher and just like more in tune, it's really cool. All the green. 
Let's see if I click on one of these. This one's really cool. While we wait for him to get back on, that one is gorgeous. Here's some other really cool ones. And hopefully it connects back on in just a few minutes. If not, we'll have to cut this short. Hopefully not. This one's really cool. Guys, I do want to say if you have not already, go ahead and follow him on Instagram. His photography is really cool. It's just great to see and also inspiring because it's it's just really cool places that I, I, and hopefully when he comes back on, he'll be able to tell you guys a little bit more about how he finds these places. Cause I think a lot of them are remote. They're not in like easy to get to places. So make sure you guys follow him on Instagram at, at J O underscore photography. It is a great page to follow. I'm very glad that I came across his page. And then don't forget to follow me on Instagram too, as well, the tra at the Traveling Lucy. And subscribe to my YouTube channel as well if you guys haven't already. Let's see, I think you just. And when he gets back on, um, we'll, we'll make it so that you guys can ask some questions as well. Let's see. There he is. I don't know what happened. There you are. That's all right. We're still live. So <laughs> I, I kept I kept the show going for you. Don't worry. I Instagrammed. I was like, oh my gosh, I lost her. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't understand. Like honestly, like to get off topic of photography, but like self service and internet in the northeast right now has been been really weird. When I go into Baltimore City, now I live I don't know, 50 miles out of Baltimore City in the country. And I get better cell service there, not that it just showed now, but then I do in the city. It's just like, I don't know what's going on right now in the world when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's like, why are we reverting back to, you know, cell phone service when it came out back in, you know, whenever it came out? I don't even know, but I guess the 2000s, it's like, I, I don't get it, but what else? No. That's crazy. It's all right. It all works out. I, I held the fort for you. I showed them some more of your photos while you were on a little break from this live. <laughs> so I, you I, wanna... I just paused it. I had to pee. I'm sorry. No, I'm yeah, joking. Well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, um... So I do want to go over um, how many states have you been to and explored um, with your photography? Um, with my photography, I've really only been to obviously Maryland, been to Pennsylvania. I haven't really been to Delaware, even though I'm right next to there. Um, I've been to New York and that's about as far out as I've gone, like with my photography. Um, like I said, only been like, two and, like two and a half years, but, uh, I guess right around there. But, um, like I said, I live in a very photogenic area. There's tons of stuff right next to me. Now, do I, I first place I want to go, New Mexico. And I've been doing a lot of picture, well, been dabbling with the star tracer or star trail pictures. Mm. Where people, it'll be just like they'll set their cameras up and it'll shoot and it'll leave this long star trail as this like the the earth rotating. Mm -hmm. um, so like New Mexico and I would love to go there. Um, I've been to like Colorado. I was born in Kentucky or Tennessee. I still don't know. Um, I've been to Athens, Greece. I lived there for five years. I lived in Colorado. Wait, what? 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 You lived in Athens, Greece? Yeah, I lived in Athens, Greece for about the first. I lived there for five years. My dad was in the military and we lived in downtown Athens. And, um, that was cool. I, I just remember the first years of my life swimming in the, in the Mediterranean. I remember going to the ruins 
you know, every day we went to the babysitters and we were in the Mediterranean. And I remember being able to look down and see fish swim by and stuff like that. But I was in into photography back then. Um, no, I, uh, I think we have gorgeous. Oh, there is a little bit of feedback on your camera, just or on your side. I don't know if, where it's coming from, but um, the Athens is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I went there. The Mediterranean is crazy gorgeous. Uh, super easy to like. You can just see through right to the bottom. When yeah. I was there, it was really cool to see like how old Greece is. Like. Yeah. It's just incredible. And the food there, oh my gosh, don't even get me started on the food. I don't know yeah. if you remember the food, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. So when I lived there, my dad was in the military. Like I said, we rented an apartment and the landlord lived above, above us. And we were kids and she would always feed us. Uh, well, when we'd go up there, she would make us toasted bread with butter and she would sprinkle sugar on it. So we would sneak up there as kids and like, oh, I can't even remember her name, but like, oh, can we have some buttered bread? And she actually had a pig head in the sink because I guess that's like something they cook in over there. And freaked us out, reminded me of like Lord of the Flies. And I was just actually, yeah, Lord of the Flies was out then. And uh, yeah, that, that freaked me out, but she was a nice lady. And yeah, like, so pretty much, like I said, first five years of my life were sitting on the Mediterranean every day. We'd collect starfish, take them back. It's so cruel. We would like let them dry and, you know, and then we'd have, my dad still has them at his house, the ones we brought back from, from Greece. But um, no, I, I mean, I'd like to get back to that. Me and my, I have a brother who's two, two years older than me. He's not in photography, he's an artist. But um, yeah, we were talking about saving up and just going back and just starting to, I'm 37 years old. I got an 11 year old. Um, she's a great kid. And uh, I'm. Gotta take her. Yeah, I wanna take her. I wanna take her to see some of these things. And, um, but I feel like, okay, I've been doing what I've been doing long enough. Now I just wanna just like go enjoy the rest of my life exploring things. So, absolutely. So, talking about exploring and discovering um how do you discover the places that you do where you're at like are most of them well populated areas are a lot of them um remote no they're all remote and okay. i so when i moved back to maryland or when we moved to maryland i had woods by my house there was creeks running through it and us kids mm -hmm. we just played in the woods that's just how it was back then and um when I got into photography, I was like, there's got to be things around here. So I did a little Google searching and um, I found Gilpin's Falls, which is probably one of the waterfalls that I get to the most. It's 15 minutes from my house. I was like, I had no idea. And it's such a like, it's an intense hike to get back there. It's even mm -hmm. for my daughter, who's 11. So went back there and like did some exploring there and it's just like you just keep going back and then um basin run road is down the street here um there used to be a train like there used to be a, like a series of train tracks that ran through this area mm -hmm. and um the, the the old steel is still there so that is pretty cool um and the creek in itself is cool. There's a lot of history. That's probably one of my most favorite places to go. Only because I get there and there's a lot of history there and there's no, no information on the internet to find about it. And it's just like, I, I go back there with my camera early in the morning and I'm like, this place has a cool ass story to tell. But, and I just get that vibe. I get that energy, like something's mm -hmm. there. It's like, this place was driving at one time so i love going there um so how do you find, find, find free free free? Huh? how do you how find, do you find out free free? Free? If it's i don't know i've free. i've looked up basin run um i can't find anything on it um i guess just vigorous like google searches but i just i don't know i just go down there and do my thing there's a place up in conowingo 
train tracks up there, a bunch of waterfalls there as well. And then Peach Bottom, I took some beautiful pictures. I think you liked a few of them. That was a hike. That was like walking through a hole in the side of a mountain where the train tracks went through. My buddy took me, it was two or it was a mile walk each way. And he showed me the one waterfall, and then I was like, dude, I hear something back there. So we went back, and sure enough, it was one of the most beautiful little waterfalls that I'd ever seen. Um, you got another one right down here in Port Deposit heading towards the Conowingo Dam. Um, so there was a picture you liked, and I remember the comment. Well, it was just a stream coming through the woods and I split toned it and add some reds and some greens. And this was in the spring. And you said, this is a beautiful picture or something like that. And it's like, as always, you know, complimenting my pictures. And then I got to thinking about it. I'm sitting there. And I'm like, there's a big hill cliff coming down back there. There has to be a waterfall. So I got on the property. I found the waterfall. It dropped three tiers. Never saw a single picture posted about it. So I was super excited about this find. I went there one time. Everything was good. Went there the second time. The property owner came out to me. Oh, my gosh. She gave me a wrath of crap for parking on our property. I was like, dude, look, there's nothing in my book bag. It's my camera, my tripod. I'll email you the pictures. She just didn't want to hear it. But beautiful waterfall. And now it's just like. So you pretty pretty from from finding one waterfall that might be on the internet somewhere, or you hear it from a friend, and then you like keep exploring and trying to find other ones that could be connected. I just jump in my truck with my camera. I drive. I find a tributary. I I like examine the landscape, mm -hmm. and I will go off in just like. I, I use logic. Like I said, there was it was smoothed out in one spot, and then there's a humongous hill that goes up top. And I was like, it's got to fall. This water's coming from somewhere, number one. Number two, it's got to fall somewhere and then just go up and explore, just like when I was a little kid. Like, we would go in the woods. We didn't know what we were going to find. We, we, in our minds, we used to read, like, Chronicles of Narnia and stuff, and we would build these things in our head. Wardrobe. Right. We, yeah, exactly. And we would just go in the woods and play these things out. And maybe we made things seem a little bit better than actually what they were. But that's the beautiful part about being a kid. And now as an adult, I'm just like, why not jump in your vehicle, go somewhere, walk through the woods and see what, what happens. And it's been successful for me. You see my Instagram page. I've, that's yeah. Like, all that's so around the house. That's even cooler that like you literally just find these random places like in the woods and you're just like following a river, just like, I guess, you know, anyone would with, you know, back when before technology and everything, everyone would just follow the water. I always try to stay by the water and a lot of paths, a lot of hiking paths, like some of the more popular ones, follow the water and, you know, you keep going and, you know, then the path ends, but you can always keep going. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the. The most, like, I think the reason why I've had a lot of success is because I go off the beaten path. I don't want to go to the place where 25 other people are going. I don't want to go for that easy shot. I want to go somewhere like I did when I was a kid, get my camera, get my tripod, my backpack, head out there and... I might find something that nobody's ever seen before because they're going for that shot they see on Instagram or Facebook or any of those or what they've seen. Like a lot of my shots from Washington Glen, like um, if you look at the pictures I took in my compositions, if you look up Watkins Glen, you'll be like, dang, he like pretty much took the same composition as so many other photographers. But the fact of the matter is maybe I got an eye for it. I don't know because I just went there and was like, this is a good pick, like snap pictures. And then if you go and check them out, it's like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, you know, like I just took the same picture as a hundred other people before me, but the most rewarding part about it is, is definitely, like I said, jump in the truck. You don't know where you're going. You mm -hmm. don't look up anything. You just drive around, truck or car, get out the camera, and just explore and find what you find. You know what I mean? You don't have to go two million miles away to have an adventure. I can do it right. Around, I do it right around here, and it's just I'm blessed with the opportunity to live in an area like this. But there's a lot more beauty 
around probably where you live than you would think, but we just never look it because we're so stuck on our devices, like checking out, oh man, I want to go here. I want to go to Athens, Greece. I want to go here. You ever think that the people in Athens, Greece might want to come here? Oh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, everybody should, I believe that everyone should travel as much as possible to see these sure. other places. Like, you know, and of course, I think that especially now with COVID, um, it's forced people to explore more in our backyards type of thing. So not only locally, but even in our state, like I know Florida is super vast. Like we have so much, not mountain wise, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> not waterfall wise either, but we have, um, we have, the springs. So we have a lot of springs in Florida. We have like the Keys, we have the West Coast, which has a whole different type of beach than the um, East Coast. And I mean, we have different cities in between and different areas that are just gorgeous. I mean, we have the Everglades and it's just it's completely different. Um, you can get so many different aspects of nature here just in Florida. And I've explored quite a bit of it because I've lived here my whole life. Um, but I think that's why I like crave so much the mountains because I'm like, I don't get mountains here. So yeah. when I go and I travel and I'm like in mountains, I'm just like in awe. I'm just like, oh God, it's so, it's so crazy. And it's just so out of the norm for me that I'm just like flabbergasted by it. I think too, probably like, so I live a little higher up than I guess Florida would be, but like. Oh, definitely. We're like high. negative. We're like How? negative sea level here. Yeah. <laughs> But when you get up that high in the mountains and you breathe that different kind of air, it makes it's it's like a different it's it's like a high almost because it's just oh. like it's so fresh. It know? is. No, that's how I feel in North Carolina. The first time I went to like the first time I truly explored North Carolina, I went to the Smoky Mountains and I remember it was October two years ago. Um went into the Smoky Mountains, did a hike. And I just remember being like addicted to breathing. Like, first of all, it's really, really humid here in Florida. Yes. It's very humid. So like, it's already harder to breathe. Like sometimes I go outside, I'm like, why can I not breathe? Like, it's like me walking into a sauna. It's kind of mm -hmm. disgusting sometimes, but it's pretty, pretty too. Um, but so when I was there, it was like the air was so fresh that I was like walking and I'm just like, I'm like, trying to get like as much in as possible. And I remember it smelling like Christmas trees. Like it just smelled like Christmas because there's all the pine trees and everything yeah. like that. So it was just, and it was just exuding that smell. And I was, I love Christmas. I love the smell of pine trees. So I was just like taking it all in. And I just remember walking and like trying to breathe as deeply as possible because it felt like I could actually breathe. And it is just completely different air. Um, and it makes you feel alive. Like I, I really, it does. I do too. And um, it's, it's funny you say that cause we went up to my buddy's cabin, not last weekend, but the weekend before. And you know, like I live in a very, I live in a nice area too when it comes to like nature and stuff like that. But it's like getting even that further away, you get no cell service. You get up there and your phone shut off for like a week. So you're disconnected from that. And then that fresh air, it's just like, it, it, it makes you just think differently. The hustle and bustle, especially in Maryland, I don't know how it is in Florida, but the hustle and bustle and just being able to like, sit down, recharge your batteries and go out and get in tune with nature. It's so nice. Like we saw a turkey up there. We saw a bear. We saw a deer, of course. There was squirrel everywhere. There was um, chipmunks, which I haven't really seen a whole lot of. I'm like, they used to be all over the place around here. But um, it's just so nice to get away. And that's what me and my daughter, we were coming through the mountains. We were up uh, just north of Williamsport. And I told her, I said, you know, um, I work for my stepdad and um, me, we had a meeting this week and I told him, I said, I want more vacation because me and my daughter want to start traveling more. I want to just jump in the truck, go four or five hours, north, south, east, west, whatever the case may be. I do have a trip set up to um, Tennessee. My aunt owns a house out there and there's a lot of beautiful waterfalls out there too. I think one oh, of them. Yeah. If you're going to Tennessee, where is it? South Tennessee, where is it? North? I know it's near. I think there's a waterfall called like Devil's something. Devil's Den or something like that. I think it's like. Is it in the Smoky Mountains like area? Uh, I can't, I can't really speak to that. I don't really know. I mean, I, I looked up 
I well, I know like so where were the hurricanes over the summer? Or the tornadoes rather. They had tornadoes there, tore up the western side. They're all they're closer to Memphis. She said they're about a half hour from Memphis. Oh, so they're on the they're on the west. Oh, they are in the West. Okay. I know it's like I think she said it's a 15 minute drive. She's trying to get me to go there for like 15 or no, three years. But um Yeah, so Memphis talking. is on the West. Um Chattanooga and um what's other uh there's another city, but like Chattanooga's in the south east and the southeast, and then yeah, and then there that's right backs up to North Carolina. Um, South Carolina and Georgia. But I was going to say if it was in the east or the southeast that Georgia, like the northern Georgia has some beautiful waterfalls as well. They're a little bit more populated, but if you kept going, like, it's funny, whenever you go on hikes, especially like the hikes that people know about, like, the further you go, the less people there are because people yeah. don't want to go that far. <laughs> well, you know, I watched a couple of land. Well, Mark Denny was talking about this. He's another landscape photographer that I follow. He was talking about he doesn't like shooting in the summertime. And now I know what that's like because as Mark Denny was talking about it's too hot. Jesus, man. Yeah, and it's going out a little bit again. Well, oh, there you are. I know. I see that. Yeah. So, well. I was going to say, do you want to cut this short? Because my internet's acting bad, but. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I was just going to say. So, I do want to say to those who are watching, um, so, Jay, uh, Jason is awesome. Go ahead and check out his Instagram. I've told you a few times already, but make sure you go check him out. Um, J-O underscore photography. And follow me on Instagram as well, at The Traveling Lucy, if you haven't already, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do go live every Tuesday um, at, at 7 p.m., sometimes a little bit different depending on the time frame. But 7 p.m. is the usual for this Travel Tip Tuesday, and we always have on a new guest. So um, thank you so much, Jason, for coming on today and telling us a little bit about your photography and sharing with um, us how you explore. Um, it's really cool to hear from up in the Northeast and everything. And you know, right. with COVID, I'm sure it's changed quite a bit too. We didn't really get to get into that, but um, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much, and uh, hopefully, you have me on here soon, and we can continue the conversation. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely push your stuff as well. Love uh, talking with you when I can, and just thanks again. Absolutely. So if you guys are watching this, make sure that you guys go ahead and watch the replay. But um, Jason has joined us today and I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. And you guys have a re great rest of your week. I will see you guys next Tuesday for another Travel Tip Tuesday. Bye. Bye.